Hi guys, another Friday Tips with Fens up here in Canberra this week. Um, yep, just going to follow on from the last four weeks where we've been looking at coming back from a major injury, uh, my back surgery. So this is going to be the final one um, and really just looking at those, the final pieces of the puzzle, uh, of putting it all together to see if you could get back to that, that condition that, that could win races. So, uh, in part four of uh, coming back from injury, coming back from the back surgery, we looked at um, you know those first few weeks back on the bike, and I talked about the fact that we don't necessarily have to periodize our training in some of the old, more traditional methods. Um, and I said, if you know, if you've if you've been riding a bike for many years, then you know you, you don't you don't necessarily just have to go out and start building up gradually, gradually, gradually with long, slow distance based stuff. So for myself. I know that my body responds really, really well to some good solid quality work around tempo, SST, that sweet spot training, and threshold based work. And I only have very small hours. So if you remember back to part four, I was doing between six to eight hours a week, and I started with a very low chronic training load, and I gradually built that up over the course of three to four months. I look to elicit a response in my CTL of around three to five points per week. Five points is pushing it if you have a long-term growth. Three points is comfortable. Now, I went from having no training load at all, having been on the couch with my back out and, and, and the surgery, etc. So, you know, I came back into it overweight at 77 kilos and with very little basic fitness left. But within a very short space of time, I did my initial FTP test up on Campbellwara Mountain and, and did about 220 watts um, for the 20 minutes. It took me longer than 20 to climb Camby because I was unfit. And I regularly kept a track of my intensity factors for given rides and my feelings of perceived effort. And I knew form was coming relatively quickly as most of my sessions were targeting that tempo, SST and threshold based training. You know, initially with just 20 minute efforts, maybe two by tens, two by eights, three by eights, two, three by tens, two by twenties, but only within an hour, hour and a half rides, but all pretty high intensity. By the time we got into the new year, um, my CTL ramp rate had come right up. I was probably up at around 35 to 40 CTL points, and I could really start to feel uh, the form coming back on. Uh, again, I then started to put in a little bit more intensity and started to add some VO2 efforts. So by March, with enough condition to handle some good quality VO2, I was, I was putting in maybe one or two VO2 sessions a week and doing some low cadence strength. So, um, you know, repeats of possibly, you know, three, four, five, six by, five, uh, by three minutes at about 60, 50, 60 RPM, really developing that um, strength endurance, that low down grunt. Very quickly, I reached about 50 CTL and I was actually starting to feel pretty good. I did a little um, FTP test and hit around 340. So in a short space of time, I put on nearly 60 watts um, weight was starting to come down um, and I was starting to look like and feel like an athlete again. Again, I think, you know, when you've been injured and you, you never know whether you're going to be able to get back uh, to suddenly start to see that response and be able to track it and monitor it through, you know, systems like today's plan enables us to monitor that and, and it's a fantastic feeling that you're achieving and getting there. So week before the, um, the state time trial championships, um, uh, New, the New South Wales State Championships. We had a local time trial at our local club in Nara, and uh, I lined up still having not done a huge amount of time on my time trial bike, purely really because I was still conscious of, of the of the neck high neck injury, and I was still a little bit concerned. But I'd done a couple of rides; it was handling it okay, and we lined up for a time trial, and um, I I smashed it out of the ballpark, and I was really really happy. Hit nearly 360 watts for the near 20 minutes and I was back in the game. Um, that came off then a CTL of around 60 points, and I was doing two VO2 sessions a week, two threshold-based sessions a week, but I was still doing no more than five, six, seven hours a week in total. And um, I lined up after a, a nice little taper period at the New South Wales State Time Trial Champs at plus 10 training stress balance, which for me is ideal. And cranked out the 360 watts that I knew I had in me from the week before and was able to win the state champs. Again, if any of you out there have come back from injury, 
you have to persevere. You have to be dogged and determined. You have to know that you can do it. A lot of the time, it's easy to sit back on the couch, put your feet up and go, well, I did it. I did the best I could, but now an injury's got me and I can't do it anymore. Problem with that, you'll get to 60 or 70 years old and you'll wish you had. So the reality of what I've tried to do over the course of the last few weeks with the Friday tips is really just to empower all of you that are out there now suffering injuries or had had injuries and, and they're giving you problems or continuing to give you issues is you can get through it. You will get through it. You've got to find a way. You've got to find that person, that doctor, the physio that can help with these issues and, and, and get you out the other side um, and, and to conquer it and uh, become the athlete that you once were. All right, guys, I hope that's helped over the course of the last few weeks. If you've got any queries or questions, please email um, uh, FTP Training and uh, we'll do our very best to answer them for you and, and help you on the trail. Thanks, guys. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.